Hello everyone, this is Guy, man. Welcome back to some more World of Warships, and today we are going to be taking a look at the new Tier 5 Russian destroyer, the Podvosky. I, I do apologize to uh, some of my Russian viewers um, or people who do speak the language a lot better than what I can. I am trying my best, best and hopefully I pronounce that kind of right. I know I, it's probably terrible. Anyways, uh, we are taking a look at the new uh, Tier... Five Russian destroyer that got replaced the I believe it was the Nevni. I'm pretty certain. Uh, if not, I'll pop up something right now. Anyway, so this is obviously after the splitting branch on the Russian destroyer line and the ship herself. It, I it's been a little while, so do uh, I do apologize. It's actually not a bad ship. Uh, probably main complaint against her. She's big she is very very big for a tier 5 uh almost the size of a fiji as you will see in the replay uh, i believe it was a fiji that was next to um she's pretty big for a destroyer so that's something you do have to keep in mind but she's fairly flat fast so let's take a look at the survivability she has 12,700 points of health which is not bad i guess um not bad uh, overall, so armor obviously is nothing really to talk about. <laughs> it's uh, Russian destroyer armor. It's destroyer armor, period. Uh, but artillery, you have main single turret guns, 130 millimeters. And just keep in mind, this ship is fully upgraded. I'm not going to be going like how I usually do, where you, I show off it being stock and then show it uh, with actual upgraded hull and everything. Uh, so this is a fully upgraded Pavosky. Sorry again. Uh, reload time is 9.2 seconds. Turn time on the guns is 22.5 seconds. Kind of slow. Uh, kind of sucks. Uh, max dispersion is 94 meters. Range is 10.5. So fairly tight shells, honestly, for uh, 10.5 kilometers. Max HE damage is 1,900. 8% fire chance with a max AP shell damage of 2,500, which is pretty decent. Um, obviously, I haven't really tried the AP, so I can't say how well, but I would assume up close and a cruiser showing you broadside, you could probably penetrate uh, with the armor of, say, like an Omaha or obviously a Phoenix. Uh, so up close, but obviously long range. Most times you're going to be firing HE most of the time. Moving on to torpedoes, you have two torpedo tubes, triple uh, torpedoes in them with a reload time of 70 seconds turn time is 7.2 seconds and max damage is 14,400 with a four kilometer range now normally um i will be saying you probably won't be using your torpedoes all that often uh the uh, they are russian torpedo tubes uh they aren't obviously set up for long range sniping like obviously german and japanese destroyers can but in close quarter combat pretty decent uh reloads pretty decent uh 70 seconds that's not bad at all kind of slow on a tier 5 but still usable uh i will have to admit uh torpedo speed is 65 knots which is pretty decent for a russian destroyer uh, most times they will have around 55 to 60 knots so 65 knots is pretty decent aa defense is nothing to talk about you have none you have five single 37 mount uh, millimeters with average damage of 29 with a range of 3.2. Yeah, yeah, you really, really don't want to be focused on by a CV at all. Maneuverability is pretty darn fast, 42 knots. Uh, something you really didn't see until you got, I believe, to the Kiev. I'm trying to remember. It's been some time since I went down the Russian destroyer line, so I do apologize. So... Speed's pretty fast. Uh, turning super radius is kind of big, 700 meters. Once again, Russian destroyers don't really turn on the dime. Rudder shift time is pretty decent, 3.2 seconds. So you can at least zip around and get around the map very quickly. Uh, dodging shots is a bit iffy, but it is doable. Concealment is pretty decent uh, for Russian destroyer. It's obviously nothing compared to a any American or... Japanese destroyer, 7.7 .7 kilometers. Uh, this is without a tier 
a 10 point captain or a any camouflage on the destroyer so you can get a little bit lower uh, probably around 6.8 or 6.5 kilometers so it's not bad uh, it's not the best obviously it's actually probably one of the worst I think uh, after you fire, fire the main guns, uh, your detectability goes out to 13.6, so there's no invisifier with the ship. Detectability range by air is 4.2 kilometers, so uh, it's, once again, not the sneakiest of ships. Uh, as far as like modules, all the same upgrades. After you get the B-hole, you do get increased health, increased AA, and uh, I believe it also additional rudder shift time yes so that does reduce your rudder shift time your torpedoes uh just increase in speed that's the major difference you have to get the whole upgrade before you can get the torpedo upgrade and then once again the range just increases uh by one kilometer so kind of beneficial i didn't get any of this because i wasn't planning on keeping the pavoyski for very long um but this is kind of a it's 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 nice i will have to say i had better luck with the, the Povoski compared to the Nevni, but once again, it's been a little while. So let's actually see what she looks like in battle. I will see you guys there. All right, everyone, welcome back to a replay with the Povoski, and I really hope I am saying this correct. We are currently playing on two brothers. We have a Gnizanao, Nagato, New Mexico, Bayern, Congo, Fiji, Leander, Konigsberg, two for tacos. Uh, and two Pavotsky. On the enemy team, there are two Sean Horse, New Mexico, Mutsu, Congo, Belfast, Emerald, Furtaka, Kirov, Kuma, and two Gnevnis. And unfortunately, I, or, sorry, better yet, fortunately, uh, I am joined with, uh, little Kidda. Uh, as you can see, uh, comparison between the Leander, it was a Leander, uh, the Pavotsky is pretty big. So, unfortunately for our team, uh, we have two tier five destroyers versus two tier six destroyers so this is going to be interesting to say the very least uh i am moving to a uh going pretty good speed going 44 knots and my pavoski does have the speed flag on it uh which does help the uh speed on the russian destroyers obviously it makes them really quick and zippy so we are gonna try to cap a as best as possible uh most of our team is actually moving over to d so this is going to be very bad if the enemy team decides to all push to a because we only have a leander two a Pavoski, and i believe it's a congo i believe it's actually an arp congo yeah it was an arp congo or something like that it was one of the uh arpeggio blue steel uh skins on it so i've moved into a i am taking cap of it and we do see a enemy Mutsu, not too far. And the range on the Povoski isn't the best, only 10 and a half. But honestly, you don't want to be firing uh, that long range because the shells do have issues with actually hitting targets. So I do lay down smoke for the friendly Leander. Uh, do you want to help him out as much as possible? A Emerald does pop up there just for a second. He instantly pops smoke and I'm going to bet there's probably more than just the Emerald in that smoke cloud. Call it a hunch. Now we do see two battleships uh, moving over and it looks like there's at least a destroyer over at D. Uh, with some additional ships, but it looks like the enemy team, uh, for the most part, is pushing over to A. Um, there is a Kuma, uh, which is rather a bit interesting. Poor Kuma, he is in a tier 7 match. This Kuma actually lasted a li little bit longer uh, than you would probably would have anticipated. Uh, opened up a salvo at the Kuma, looked at my torpedoes, yeah, 4 kilometers does not go very far and instantly become the favorite target for all the enemy ships because obviously i'm the only one spotted uh because both the leander and the friendly Pavoski are in my smoke screen so i'm zipping away as quick as possible so i don't get gunned down unfortunately for for whatever reason i get away with this uh fairly unscathed I only lose about a thousand points of health so pretty decent but as you can see the enemy team is pushing heavily into a the enemy team have lost a cruiser 
which is beneficial. Leander is working on that emerald, does pop his own smoke, and at this own time, I'm really debating whether or not we're going to survive. There is the enemy Belfast 1 cruiser I do not want to deal with. Uh, he did use his radar, so we do know that at least he has used it. Uh, looks like the Furutaka and the Kuma are both firing at us. Oh, time to dodge and weave, dodge and weave. And this is actually, I guess, a good thing about the Tier 5 versus the original, which I believe uh, was the Nevni. Uh, it was the fact that the Bavolsky is actually very quick for a tier 5 destroyer. Obviously, she's one of the quickest, or is the quickest, tier 5 destroyer. Uh, and I don't think we're going to be able to survive this. Uh, both Little Kidda and the Leander, Leander are both uh, working away. Uh, but I can see that A is a lost cause, and it's probably better if we do leave A as quick as possible. So I do point in chat uh, that we need to get out of there as quick as possible because we are just being overrun. There are seven ships there versus three and one battleship that is sniping. Uh, obviously, the sniping battleship is not very beneficial, though I don't really blame him because... That's a lot of ships, and you can get gunned down very, very quickly. Now, we are going to lose our friendly Leander to the enemy Gnevni. Um, the only ship that's really in range is the Kuma and the Sharn Horse, and I have kind of higher hopes that I'll be able to damage the Kuma a little bit better. And unfortunately, Little Kid has torpedoes fall a little bit short on that Kuma, and I am going to get out of there as quick as I can. Uh, unfortunately, little kid uh, is going to be gunned down here. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think he saw the chat. So I do apologize, little kid. Uh, so doing doing pretty good job running away. Now, fortunately, the guns uh, point backwards pretty far. Um, except for the front three are having a bit of issues. I'm actually kind of looking at we're only able to get off two guns at a time. Uh, we do get a fire on the Kuma, which is nice. Uh, he's hopefully going to burn. I don't know if he has used his damage control. Now, since we are falling back, and I'm going to actually try to push into uh, B, uh, because essentially A is completely lost, and the Congo is the only one really defending. So I'm going to slip out of detection uh, and try to push down into C and regroup with our team. Now, one little thing that has happened to me, and this is going to be a little story time, so I'm going to pull away because all I'm going to be doing is moving into the channel and moving into C. So, uh, I was in a game with a good friend of mine, Jaybird, uh, you, who you probably guys have seen uh, every now and then on my videos, and we're... In a tier 6 match, playing our Fusos, and there was this uh, friendly destroyer, I'm not going to say names, uh, that was hiding, and he was pink, and he started torping people. Uh, he torped me, uh, caused me to flood, and then he tried to torp the Cleveland and then died. So, essentially, due to the fact that he did this, um, and I run aground here, which is really odd. So do watch out for this area right here because I do run aground and don't know exactly why. Uh, so do watch out uh, for a possible team killer. Now, we lost the game probably due to the fact that uh, he obviously didn't help. And then he does uh, torpedo two ships and cause uh, damage to them. Our team has at least set up... Uh, a or at least taking out uh, enemy Congo, which is good, but we do lose our Furutaka to the Mutsu. Now, so I was slightly irked, if you couldn't tell, I was slightly irked, and I go into the next game, and due to the fact that I'm slightly irked, I point out that, uh, watch out for this player, uh, he is a team killer, and do you know the first question I get is, is he black? Now, I'm normally not going to uh, talk about this stuff, so this is probably one time I will. But, oh, that pissed me off. Oh, that pissed me off. So, I point out saying that's racist, asking me instantly on a giant MMO whether or not a player is black due to the fact of his actions. So, anyway, back to the game. 
Uh, there is an anime Mutsu three kilometers away, speeding uh, quickly out of the channel. Launch torpedoes, one slightly online and one behind. And then we also see the en enemy, Gnevni. He does land a pretty big hit on us. Torpedoes are looking pretty good. Do land all three. And the extra torpedoes actually make contact with the Gnevni. So we earn devastating strike and double strike which is pretty fantastic, but I'm going to go ahead and slow up and pop my smoke because there is a Emerald and a New Mexico, which has just opened fired on us. Fortunately, it does miss because I did slow up fairly quickly. Now, at this time, the match is actually fairly close. Uh, the enemy team is currently pushing into B. We do have a few uh, ships that are going back to B to try to assist in the maintaining cap of B, obviously. So at this time, I'm actually just currently waiting on my torpedoes uh, to reload. I still have my speed boost up for 12 more seconds and I'm gonna hope I'm gonna be able to land my torpedoes on this New Mexico. Torpedoes are set, so let's actually rush this New Mexico. Now the New Mexico's guns are only able to fire uh, the front guns are only going to be able to fire at me. But fortunately, I think this New Mexico realizes the situation he's in. And can I launch my torpedoes? Torpedoes away. And we get another devastating strike. We lose our engines once again, which is highly unfortunate because that's actually quite aggravating. Probably would have helped had I had the additional uh, module on the Podvoski that would prevent me from losing my engines, but at least we have, uh, I believe it's last stand. Yes, at least we have last stand, so we're still able to move around at fairly decent speed, uh, around 36 knots with a broken engine, which is actually downright fantastic. Now, we do have a Sean Horse that is moving back into C. We know there is at least a enemy emerald in that smoke screen. And trying to be a little bit careful, I am low on health. I only have 3,592 points of health. And so I'm, I'm hoping I can get uh, a torpedo hit on this emerald. Uh, but we do have a friendly Fiji firing down on that emerald. And that emerald is probably not going to stand a chance uh, against that Fiji or any of our battleships if they do make it around the corner. Uh, looks like the emerald's actually rushing. He does have high acoustics up and bringing my ship to bear, gonna fire torpedoes. And this is slightly dangerous. Highly don't recommend what I just did. Uh, I do point in out in chat, chat. Um, watch out. <laughs> yes, shit, watch out. Uh, so torpedoes are away, but fortunately uh, both battleships are easily able to avoid those. So yeah, don't recommend doing that, but oh well. Now, we do know there is a Sean Horse that is pushing into, or south of A, hiding behind that island. And we do know there is at least a cruiser that was pushing down into the canal. So, there might be a possible sneak attack or backdoor attack from that cruiser. So, at this time, I'm going to be a little bit careful. Uh, the Sean Horse does finally pop back up. I went ahead and popped my smoke. So let's see what will happen with the Sean Horse. The Sean Horse, I do have to be careful because the fast firing guns and also it does have torpedoes. Shots away, looking pretty, pretty good, pretty good. So fortunately, a plane was shot down, so I don't have to worry about uh, the plane spotting any torpedoes. But I really need to be close to the Sean Horse just to ensure that my torpedoes will make contact. Uh, since they do have a short range, I have to know where he is. And I do back up just a bit, just in case the Sean Horse does decide to push into my smoke. Which, I mean, he could have done. Extremely dangerous, uh, especially if he does not have hydroacoustics or any uh, vigilance. Now, we are detected by the enemy Kuma, who I guess got his man pants on and decided to push into C. Now, the Fiji is obviously going to be taking him on. My money's on the Fiji, I will have to say. So I rush out of my smoke screen, and there's the Sean Horse two kilometers away. 
torpedoes are both away and fortunately the Sean horse open fired on the Fiji so there's no way he can actually open fire at us but obviously there are secondaries but our torpedoes look pretty good and we take out the enemy Sean horse so yeah pretty good I, I will have to say four kills two devastating strikes a double strike and we our team have has had control of a C and D that we are about to win on points and pretty pretty good idea pretty pretty excited about this game uh, very first game with the Pavoski. uh so yeah let's go ahead and look at the victory screen so our team earned a victory and we brought home 347,983 silver 4519 xp 226 free xp we got two devastating strikes and two and one double strike uh, we did 98,713 points of damage, 47 shell hits, 12 torpedo hits, 1 incapacitation, 4 kills, 2 fires, 8 floods, 1 defended base cap, and 2 assisted base capture. We earned top of the team with a base XP of 1,943. We did almost 35,000 against the New Mexico, around 27 or sorry, 25,000 against the Sharn, around 23 against the Mutsu, and around 12,000 against the Nevni. Our torpedoes did actually quite a bit, so I would probably say this is not something you're going to see very often with the Pavuski. Uh, you're probably going to be firing your guns more often than not. So after everything was said and done, very lucrative game. We brought 333,945 silver home which is always fantastic so the Pavoski is actually a very interesting ship it's a very big ship she's very quick which is very beneficial especially these low tiers you won't see anything that quick uh the closest would be the kamikaze and the minikaze but that's with speed flags and boost they can get up around 41 knots while the Pavoski can get around 44 knots uh, pretty easily without any engine boost so fun tier 5 I actually kind of enjoy it more than I did the uh, Nevni I will admit so yes recommender but we'll see how the next Russian destroyer looks. So I will see you guys. Blah, blah, blah. So thank you guys so much for watching. And if you like what you saw, hit the like and subscribe button. You guys have a great and fantastic day. Zai Jen.